Audi, Immortalium here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the first feature length loop on the third film, The Mystery of Mamo, also known as The Secret of Mamo. The Mystery of Mamo was released in 1978 and was made to cash in on the popularity of Loop on the Third Part 2, which was a massive success on Japanese television at the time. Uh, but how good is this film? And that's what I'm going to be discussing today. So let's get started. So what is the story of The Mystery of Mamo? The Mystery of Mamo opens up with the seeming execution of Lupin III. Uh, Zenigata, the man who has devoted his life to pursuing Lupin and bringing him to justice, cannot believe this. And so he travels to Transylvania in order to confirm this fact. Lo and behold, Lupin III is actually alive. However, this does bring up many other questions, such as why did the man who was executed have the same DNA as Lupin? Meanwhile, Lupin and his gang decide to go to Egypt to steal the Philosopher's Stone at the behest of Fujiko Mine. However, Fujiko Mine betrays Lupin and steals the stone in order to give it to her client, uh, the mysterious Mamo. And her betrayal uh, puts a rift in the Lupin gang. And that's how the story begins. So, the Mystery of Mamo is a very interesting movie. There's a lot to like here. Um, the dynamics of the Lupin gang is retained. Um, there's a lot of amazing action sequences, uh, which I'll get onto more in the animation section. And there's a lot of intrigue regarding who this man was that was executed at the beginning of the story. However, there is a problem associated with this movie, and it's a problem that a lot of people have with certain episodes of the series, and that is the introduction of sci-fi slash supernatural segments. And while there are many episodes of the original series that I will defend to have sci-fi slash supernatural segments, such as the time travel episode of the first season, I do confess that the way that the sci-fi slash supernatural segments are handled in this movie are quite sloppy. And not to mention that, but there's also a bit of a strange tonal shift. Um, part of the idea that the creators had when they made this movie uh, was to have it more close to the manga. Uh, that is, more edgy, uh, more dark, more violent, more sexy. While it is a very interesting way to release the first loop on the third feature film, it is a method that brings into sharp contrast with the TV series that was airing at the time, uh, which was more of a family-friendly thing. Admittedly, it did have a lot of adult and edgy themes in it, um, but the way that the violence and sexuality and everything is handled in this film uh, brings it more to mind with the first part of the original Loop on the Third TV series. Uh, that is the part that some people have big issues with. So overall, this is a very interesting movie and I do end up enjoying the film, um, but admittedly there are a lot of aspects to it that I do have issues with. Overall, I see it as an okay film. Certainly a decent attempt for Loop on the Third's first feature-length adventure, um, but I do think that there are many other Loop on the Third stories uh, that far outshine this particular adventure. And um, with regards to the animation, now the animation is very interesting in this movie. Um, this film was given an unusually high budget uh, compared to many other anime films at the time, and in fact was Tokyo Movie Shinsha's, or TMS Entertainment's, first feature-length film. They had created um, previous theatrical productions such as the Panda Go Panda series, uh, but those were essentially short films, whereas this is in fact a feature-length film. And the animation in this film is actually quite good. There's a lot of really good animation in this film. In particular, I'll always remember the animated sequence where the helicopter chases Lupin and his gang. I think that is an exceptionally well animated sequence, and there's a lot of very good animation in this film. However, I do have an issue with the art style of this film. Um, as I mentioned before, this movie was released during the time of Lupin the Third Part Two, and so they made an unusual decision to have the characters resemble the original Monkey Punch manga. And while certain characters can get away with it relatively easy, such as Lupin the Third 
or Fujiko. There are some other characters that are a little too different for my liking and they're a bit jarring and a particularly good example I believe is Goemon who looks really different to his uh, TV incarnation and because the, I find that quite distracting. And so overall while I do believe that this movie is well animated um, I do think that the character designs are a bit off-putting and I believe that they should have been more loyal to the TV series that was airing at the time. Now with regards to the music, uh, Yuji Ono is involved with this movie and of course he does a great job with this soundtrack. I think the soundtrack is excellent. There's a lot of very stylish music that is played um, during the misadventures of Lupin the Third and his gang. And I have to say that the soundtrack does stand out a lot to me. There's a lot of excellent pieces that play um, during many of the segments, such as, for instance, the helicopter scene that I mentioned before, and during many of the action sequences. Admittedly, there are some strange tracks with regards to the supernatural slash sci-fi elements, although I admit that the soundtrack for those segments are actually better than the actual scenes that they're playing for. So, um, overall, I think that the soundtrack for this one is actually very well done and I do have to commend it. With regards to the voice cast, now this is a very interesting thing. So with regards to the Japanese voice cast, they reuse the voice cast of the TV series, which is excellent. All of the cast do an excellent job, such as Yasuo Yamada, uh, Kiyoshi Kobayashi, uh, Eiko Matsuyama. They all do an excellent job uh, with their characters. However, what I wanted to elaborate on is actually the many English dubs that have been produced for this film. There are four English dubs uh, that have been produced for the mystery of Mamo. And while this uh, box set that I have here, um, the UK release from Manga Entertainment, only contains uh, one of them, the discotheque media release of the mystery of Mamo actually contains all four English dubs uh, produced for this film. And so if your tastes are for English dubs, you have a surprisingly wide variety of options to pick from. Now, with regards to how this film was released, as I mentioned before, the discotheque media release is the way to go. That has all of the English dubs, it has a variety of extras on there, it is a very well done package. In contrast, the release that I have, the Manga Entertainment release, uh, is very limited. As I mentioned before, it's very limited in terms of the English options that it provides, and it only has a couple of pieces of uh, concept art and trailers. Certainly not a terrible release and I'm pretty happy to have this release that I have here but I do definitely recommend that if you're going to pick up The Mystery of Mamo that you pick up the discotheque media release uh, because I believe that it is a more fleshed out package. So overall what are my thoughts on The Mystery of Mamo? Um, it is a movie that I think is very interesting and certainly Lupin the Third fans uh, should definitely check it out as it's the first feature-length film from the franchise. Um, there's a lot of great animation in this movie. Uh, the interactions between the characters are as great as ever. However, uh, I do agree that the sci-fi slash supernatural themes that are present in this film, particularly near the end, uh, do sink this film quite a bit. Not to mention the strange character designs that they chose for some characters and the kind of more violent, sexy, edgy themes that they decided to introduce in this film. I believe it takes away some of the identity uh, that the Lupin the Third franchise had been building uh, with the Lupin the Third Part 2 TV series at the time. And so overall I think it's an okay film. It's certainly enjoyable to me and it's enjoyable to other Lupin the Third fans, but there are much better uh, Lupin the Third stories in the franchise. And so overall this film is merely an okay film. So thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe and bye bye.